will be presenting to you messages on those topics, on those um, texts. One other thing to note is that your, you'll notice your scripture lesson in your bulletin will always be the same. Revelation 1, 1 through 8. Throughout the next six weeks, I invite you to study and learn this passage. And on Monday, Thursday, that will be the text that we look at together as a congregation. So with that, then, let us begin our service in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Would you rise for our opening hymn and for the April hymn of 84, Hallelujah, what of Lent is a season of repentance. It is a season where we prepare for the death and resurrection of Christ Jesus by first taking the time to acknowledge that we in ourselves are in fact sinful and unclean. With that then let us bow before the Lord and confess to him our sins. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, Increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right within me cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy holy spirit from me restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free Hear 
clear then from the book of 1 John, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, by the words of God himself, I can declare to you quite proudly today that your sins are forgiven. Amen. At this time, we will do a traditional element of the Ash Wednesday service, the imposition of ashes. If you are penitent of your sins, acknowledging your sin before God and wish to receive the sign of the cross on your forehead, come forward as you're directed forward by Ken, coming up in tables as like communion, during which time I will then remind you the truth that from dust you were created, to dust you shall return, and from dust you shall rise again. Therefore at this time come as you are directed.
At this time, I will invite you to stand as you are able out of respect for the reading of God's word tonight. Our scripture lesson comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. We read the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants the things that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, the ruler of kings on earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom of priests to his God and Father, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so... Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Here ends the reading of God's word. You may be seated. This time we will collect our offering this evening for answers in Genesis. Let us now sing together hymn number 69, Ah, Holy Jesus, How Hast Thou Offended? Number 69.
Our sermon text for this evening comes from Revelation chapter 2, verses 8 through 11, as well as chapter 3, verses 7 through 13. Reading, And to the angel of the church of Smyrna, write the words of the first and the last who died and came to life. I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. And the slander of those who say they are Jews but are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested, and for ten days you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write the words of the Holy One, the true one, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, who shuts and no one opens. I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Behold, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews but are not, but lie. Behold, I will make them come and bow down before your feet, and they will learn that I have loved you because you have kept my word about patient endurance. I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on earth. I am coming soon. Hold fast to what you have so that no one may seize your crown. The one who... The one who conquers, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Never shall he go out of it, and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from God out of heaven, and my own new name. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Pray with me. Almighty God, these are your words, and your word is truth. Sanctify us today in that truth. Convict us of sin in our lives where that is necessary. Comfort and encourage us with the promises of your gospel. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The sermon is titled, The Call to Endure Faithfully. Because to the church in Smyrna and the church in Philadelphia... There was one true fact that both churches were under an assault. An assault by Satan posing as a synagogue of the Jews. An assault where Satan was going to work for their utter downfall and demise. An assault in which Satan, by all accounts, should have been victorious. Christ has a pattern when he writes these letters to the various churches. The pattern is this. The first thing he does is explain to them who in fact is writing to them. For those in Smyrna, what they needed to hear was that he is the first and the last who died and came to life. To the church in Philadelphia, they needed to hear that in fact Christ holds the keys to open and shut the doors of all time and all events. Next, he addresses the congregations themselves, saying what they've done and what they have working against them. Finally, he promises them And it's these promises tonight that we take away. For the trials that these churches were under are not new trials by any means, nor are they trials that that have disappeared by the wayside over the last 2,000 years. No, in fact, the the trials that afflicted the churches in Smyrna and Philadelphia are the trials that we as believers face today. That in fact, Satan 
is working against you today. And he's working against you by leading you to doubt the word of God. Dear friends, the synagogue of Satan that John writes of to both of these congregations, they were saying that they were teaching the word of God. In fact, they were presenting themselves as a faithful set of people who were faithfully proclaiming the words of God when in reality they denied Jesus Christ. They denied His name, His work, and His power. They denied Him. And much the same happens in our society today. Taking a 10-minute scroll through any of the current social media apps will tell you much the same. That in fact, those who are against the Word of God are very open that the Word of God is false in their words. And even many of those who purport to proclaim the Word of God proclaim a false gospel based off of what you can do and have done. Dear friends, that gospel is no gospel at all. Your works are of no benefit to you. In fact, your, wor your very works should outright condemn you. For you never live up to the commands of God. One of my favorite hymn verses in the entire hymnal comes from this hymn that we just sang. Where the author of the hymn writes, Who was the guilty who brought this upon thee? Alas, my treason, Jesus has undone thee. Was I, Lord Jesus, I it was denied thee, I crucified thee. The reality of the words of this hymn writer shows that the reality that it was, in fact, our works that put Jesus on that cross. That it was, in fact, our own efforts and our own merits that caused the Lord of all creation to suffer and die. And that it was in fact for us and on account of the failure of our works that he had to come to save us from our works. And in the world today, you will experience trials from the synagogues of Satan, from the churches of Satan, from the mouths of the messengers of Satan, you will receive trial and tribulation and pain. You will receive discomfort, discontentment, and sorrow. And you are called to endure. You are called as a believer Be faithful unto death. You are called as a believer, hold fast to what you have so that no one may seize your crown. You are called today as a believer in Christ Jesus and his completed work on the cross to continue living your life as one who believes, as one who who has faith. That in spite of what Satan, the world, and your own sinful flesh will throw against you, that you can fall back on the reality that Christ Jesus died for you. That he rose again that he is the first and the last. That he knows your suffering and your works. And then finally he gives them both a promise. 
and the promise is the same to both of these congregations who suffer. The promise is the same to you and me today and to, in fact, all Christians on the face of the earth. The promise is that when you suffer and when you inevitably die, you will receive the crown of eternal life that you will receive the reality that nothing on the face of this earth will be able to conquer you ever again. That sin will no longer hold temptation over you. That your faith will never be unsure again. That your heart will never sorrow. In a world where, as John, or as John writes later in the book, in a world where there is no more crying, no more pain, no more sorrow. The promise for you is the reality of eternity. The promise for you is the reality that your suffering is temporary on this earth and that in fact your Lord God prepared a place for you and waits for you. So that when that time comes, He will look at you and say, well done, good and faithful servant. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is how it ends. How all of them end. Because the best thing you have when you're being afflicted, tempted, or persecuted is the Word of God. The only truth that you can hang your hat on when all you hear around you is lies is this word of God for you. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. I will invite you to stand for our hymn, O Sacred Head Now Wounded, hymn number 61.
Would you now pray with me the prayer that our Lord has taught us? <coughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing together beneath the cross of Jesus, hymn number 62. <coughs> Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.